Hello children. So now uh, we are going to be discussing about the cognitive development, which is our, of course, uh, part three of the same topic, which is our um, pre-operation stage, which is from two to seven years. We are doing the early childhood, which is stage two. And now we are doing the part three. And of course, the last uh, video audio of this particular topic. So here we are going to be highlighting the cognitive development, which is the most important and the key highlight of the Bigot's uh, stages of uh, cognitive development. So how like um, each uh, stage is so important in terms of how is it developing, uh, you know, cognitively. So now coming to cognitive development of uh, children between two to seven years. So, of course, in this particular stage, you know, uh, children are acquiring, uh, you know, uh, the concept of, uh, of course, the object uh, permanence. So, object permanence, which was not there in, um, so to say, the infancy, you know, or uh, the sensory motor stage, which was absent, has now, of course, come back in this particular stage. And now children... Um, you know, they very much have the object permanence. They do not lack it, but uh, they will, uh, you know, uh, be able to really have this ability now, which is the object permanence, which actually means that uh, even if the object is not in sight right in front of them, they will still be able to, uh, you know, remember about the object and they will not forget it. It's not like, you know, out of sight, out of mind uh, theory here. But they will very much remember even if uh, the object, uh, you know, does not continue to be in front of them. You know, so there, yes, definitely the object permanence uh, is there and it helps them to actually make use of these mental uh, symbols. And uh, these mental symbols further help them to uh, actually represent the objects. But definitely uh, whatever they are doing physically they are not able to perform all of that mentally. So uh, they can't comprehend so much mentally. So there is a gap there. But uh, when we talk about this particular stage, they do also have the ability that they are able to mentally, uh, uh, you know, represent uh, those objects which probably are not uh, physically there, you know. So uh, like how sometimes children come up with really weird uh, paintings, designs, drawings, pictures, you would feel that, oh, where did they actually see this? But, you know, that's all they're very creative way of putting up things and that is their way of uh, uh, you know being able to uh, really uh, mentally represent too many things which don't really physically are there but yes in the form of uh, you know uh, designs uh, you know they represent uh, people trees you know houses animals you know so that is their way of uh, representing these figures you know, so this is, of course, uh, engaging the child in a lot of uh, symbolic thought. So when we talk about symbolic thought, it is but uh, we can say the ability of the human to visualize shapes, you know, and uh, function. And then uh, they are actually able to render those visions into, you know, a physical form. So they are able to visualize a lot of different kinds of things objects events people and then they're able to give it a physical form when they actually uh, you know paint they draw etc you know so this is what is called symbolic thought and in this stage this particular uh, so to say ability of symbolic thought is expanding and uh, it is definitely progressing in this age of two to seven years the pre-operational stage so to say the early childhood and there are a couple of features which are also getting um, developed they are getting evolved so uh, there are four important uh, features of course five including the object permanence also because the object permanence has uh, developed in the pre-operational stage so along with that we have four more one is the egocentrism animism intuitive thought and centration so in all we have five important features object permanence uh, it is developed and we cannot write that they lack object permanence because that would mean that it's not there 
So because it is very much present, so there is presence of object permanence. There is egocentrism, there is animism. We have the fourth one, which is the intuitive thought. And we have the fifth one, centration. And the four most important silent features of uh, pre-operational stage. The four most important ones are centration, animism, intuitive thought and centration. And of course, egocentrism. So uh, these are the four most important ones. So when we talk about egocentrism, uh, you know, egocentrism is basically like how they continue to focus only on themselves. You know, there is a lot of self-focus and uh, they actually view the world. Children view the world only, uh, you know, in terms of their own selves and they are not able to appreciate the viewpoint of others. So egocentrism is, you can say, it's an inability of a child, you know that they they fail to see the situation from the uh, from another person's point of view you know and um, so basically um, uh, the egocentric child you know will assume that other people uh, see hear and feel exactly how this child is you know so for them their point of view is all that matters you know because they are not appreciating the other person's point of view so that is their assumption that whatever they are feeling seeing whatever they are hearing is probably exactly the same for everyone else too how they are seeing hearing and feeling you know so they are uh, battling or so to say they are not uh, being able to um, uh, really um, develop this area and they are having this feature of egocentrism you know and when we talk about animism of course uh, you know they actually feel that uh, everything around them is living you know and they do uh, attribute these lifelike qualities you know to even the inanimate objects you know so they would feel they would say things like you know when they are walking and suddenly they fall they probably will blame the road or the wall that oh the road hit me the wall hit me so they feel that everything is living everything has the lifelike qualities you know so like if they are running they slip on the road and uh, they would say that the road has hurt me, you know. So, you know, they feel that everything around them has life and that's how they, they, they believe and that's how they behave also. Then coming to intuitive thought, uh, this age group, of course, when uh, approximately they are between four to seven, they have now become a little curious and they have a lot of questions coming up. So they have questions like, you know, why is the sky blue? And, you know, uh, how would trees grow? How come they become so tall? And, you know, questions like these. So uh, then, of course, these questions uh, are also helping, helping them to maybe acquire knowledge and understand why are the things the way they are. And this particular stage is the stage of intuitive thought. You know, and of course, the last feature which we have is the centration, where they focus on a particular characteristic, a single characteristic or a feature for understanding a particular event. So in centration, it is a tendency for them, you know, to focus on one aspect, silent aspect of a situation and they probably neglect all the other uh, uh, other aspects and uh, so this is what uh, happens in centration like how children have some of their really favorite things and that's how they talk like you know I want to have uh, uh, you know like a tall uh, so to say like a big glass of juice you know and uh, uh, like you know how they are preferring a tall narrow glass to a short broad one you know and uh, so basically even if the glass is a tall narrow one or whether it's like uh, uh, like a short broad one it's going to anyway hold uh, the equal amount of liquid in it but you know they they have this tendency to really fo focus on one aspect or uh, so to say you know on um, particular that one uh, uh, silent aspect of the situation and they probably will neglect all others and they can stress on those 
characteristics or features like how uh, i want to have you know a big glass of juice you know like so this is how they are focusing on that particular characteristic only you know see so they have that's how they kind of um, differentiate also between different things that probably are their favorite things so you know like uh, so they stress on one feature this is what they do in centration so for example also maybe if they have a favorite doll and they can maybe say that okay i want that doll which has uh, you know like long hair you know and uh, i want to have a big glass of uh, you know juice so they have this tendency to really focus on that one single characteristic or feature you know so this is what happens in uh, centration you know so they center around that one feature only and probably they will neglect all other features there you know so that is how they talk also with adults you know so this was all about these very important features in the cognitive development thank you so much